wow. I wish we had that on the whole time. When y'all feel free to holler at me at any time if something ain't going, I mean, just scream. Yeah, just scream at me. Say it ain't working. Um, and then we go from there. But um, most of you, those of you watching by internet, I was trying to uh, show you my granddaughter that she's learning how to walk. They said she'll never walk, never crawl. But she's been crawling up a storm. Now she's beginning to pull herself up and taking steps. And uh, just amazing to me how God, if you trust God, regardless of the outcome of what doctors say or what the world say. And like I said, the doctors are only reporting their true fact. It's, not, it's nothing against doctors. They're reporting that you do have a disease. You do have a problem. You do have that. It's not the doctor's fault. But the problem, what we have as Christians, we take what is said to us and, and take it and, and allow the enemy to bread it into us and says, well, it's just meant to be. It's just the way it is. Instead of keep trusting God and believing what the word of God said and trusting his word that he says there's nothing too hard for your God can do, can't do. There's nothing. And he said, if you believe that you already receive, you shall have anything you ask for in my father's name. So you, the problem is you got to trust and believe through the circumstances, through the pain, through the heartache, through the confusion, you still have to trust the living God and believe what he says. Nothing wrong for you to have some sympathy every now and then and a hug every now and then. There's nothing wrong with that, but you got to make up your mind to trust God because God will not allow you to live in sympathy. If he didn't do it for me, he's not going to do it for you because <laughs> he has no respect to person. He wants you to be men and women of the most high. To get up, up on your own two feet, to walk upon waters, to tread upon serpents, to drink any deadly thing and it shall not. Now, I'm not telling you to go out there and drink bleach. But I'm telling you, you don't know what you're drinking when you drink your glass of water, even though it's in a bottle. That's why God says you drink, you can drink any and eat any deadly thing and it shall not harm you. Because you trust, you're, supposed to, you're supposed to trust God in everything. Recognize God in the bottle of water. Recognize God in your own daily lives, your routines. Don't get immune of your routines in your daily lives. Because you'll forget your purpose, what God had created you for, because you wouldn't even be alive today if it wasn't for God. You would, see, we think, I keep telling this church this all the time. You think you're going to get up in the morning. You think you're going to go home today and still breathe. Because you're built to live forever. But you have to recognize if I make it to the night and still breathing, hallelujah, it's because God ain't through with me yet. He, I got things I got to do on this earth for him. See? You trust God in every step that you make in life, everything. Like I said, it's not easy to trust when you have something that broke your trust. You broke in trust as a man and a woman in a relationship. It's a hard, a hard thing to when you break trust the same way if God don't answer your prayers, to when you think it need to be answered, you lose your trust. Y'all holy, ain't you? Y'all trust God every day, don't you? Shame, shame, shame. Sometimes we all been through this walk of, Lord, I trust you up to this part. Then after that, I'm going back to my sympathy. I'm going back to what I feel and touch and that I can see. And I see problems. I see, uh, I, just, I just can't handle this no more. So you forget trusting what the word of God says Instead of keep believing why you cry, why you hurt, why you in the confusion, you still believe and trust God where God says, 
I'll make a way where there seemeth no way. And where the word of God says there's nothing too hard for your God can do that, can he, that he can't do. He can raise the dead after they've been dead for four and five days. Lazarus was dead four days, wasn't it? Wasn't it? All right, and they said, he stink now. He didn't worry about the decay of this body because why? I'm the one that create the body from the dirt. So I'm, I can put the body back from rot. See, it's, it's just if you get your trust, allow God to build your trust. See, that's the thing about it. He will be, if he knows that you know, that you know, that you know. I made up my mind. And he sees that he's done like, let, you done allowed him to train you with your tongue, to keep your mouth from negativity, keep your mouth from strife and all the confusion. Keep your mouth. Now, there's nothing wrong to have somebody to talk to said, I'm confused. Doesn't mean you're doubting your faith or doubting your trust. God is training you, building you. No matter who you are, you need, that's why it's good to have mature Christians in the church. Because if you can't even pray for yourself and, and what we call lift your own self up, how are you going to lift the multitudes that God brings in here? Because you can't even lift your own self up. Because they're going to be people of God's sin here that's going to be sick, bound by devils, bound by diseases, confused. I mean trouble on top of trouble, but if you and I have not allowed to trust God and allow God to build us to know you're going to make it and help somebody else, he's not can't send them here. He's not can't send them in your path because you'll get on that bandwagon, woe is me, and we all get woe is me and get low as we can go. And then there we are in the middle of a situation or a crisis and just the way it is. And this is why God tells us that when people says, trust God, do all that you can do and trust. Well, you don't go vote. You don't go do this and you don't do that. You don't try to lose weight before you get diabetes. Uh-huh. What are you saying? The day the Lord got on with me Thursday. Perfect health. Went through my physical, was perfect health. Told you about the enzyme in my muscle that was high. Went back, got to the doctor, said, what's going on with that? That's just your testosterone medicine that you got in your muscle. You're good to go. So I'm 100% full of health. He said, other than your right eye, he said, man, you the man, you, you're a healthy man. I said, well, get ready. The right eye is going to be all right, too. Amen. You're a healthy man. So I, I went home, and I said, praise God. I, he didn't complain about my weight, and, he didn't say that. My sugar was real low. My cholesterol real low. Because I meditate day and night that Jesus Christ's blood is running through my veins. Y'all didn't hear that. It ain't no death in his blood. It ain't no diseases in his blood. I didn't inherit my mama's blood. When I became, ooh, get me happy now. I didn't inherit my daddy's blood. When I become saved, I've been adopted and, re and had a blood transfusion. If I pronounce that right, I trust God. But when we trust God, we just trust God, but don't think about God that I need to go out here and, and uh, in the middle of the hurricane and go fishing. I trust God. No, that's stupidity. That's ignorance. That's tempting the Lord thy God. The same way with me is I love to eat. Why not? You give me a biscuit, boy, I'd love to jow on that stuff. So what I was saying, I, I've been gaining weight. And I tried on a pair of pants Thursday, and my God, it wouldn't fit. <laughs> Perfect health. Perfect health, though. But I didn't, I didn't say, well, I'm perfect health. Just give me another 40. No, the Holy Spirit hit me. No, son, you keep praying to me, help you with your weight. But you are giving in to every temptation that the food slides onto the table. And I said, yes, sir. He said, let me, ask, let me tell you this, how 
even in Christianity is. He said, Christianity, look at people that smokes, chews, dips, and have a problem even with drugs. And criticize them, says, how can they keep doing that stuff? How, that is, so, let's look at them. My God, I could get rid of that. They make up their mind. Well, you know what? You need to give up some of that chicken. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit. You, what do you mean? Well, we'll sit there and bless God. I don't say, yeah, I make up my mind, get rid of it. But, oh, God, help me. Help me with this chocolate cake. Can I get a second piece? And you, and you sympathize, make yourself sympathy like, oh, this is just a piece of cake. Everybody have that problem. Yeah, a lot of people have a problem with drugs, too. A lot of people have a problem with cigarettes. A lot of people have a, pro- a lot of problems with alcohol. A lot of people had a lot of problems, all type of situation. That's why God says, I want you, whoever I set free is free indeed. That means there's supposed to be nothing in your life controlling your life. And Christians put a, well, that ain't bad. And that is, no, no, no. All the things is above. Nothing should control your life except me, saith the Lord. Now, he controlled my life. Because he is the one that I trust. So if I trust him and he tells me, son, you're in perfect health, but start pushing the plate back even more and eating, turn, turning some of this other stuff down instead of keeping it in your body. Why? Because I know the future. If you don't got perfect health right now, doesn't mean wait till you get sick to start. Be- you see what I'm saying? See what the Lord, you don't wait till you get diabetes to start cutting down from what you need from diabetes. You don't wait till you get cancer and then start cutting down for what you should have been doing when you got cancer. We got to die to the flesh daily, the Bible says. And that's in every area of your life. And then I trust God, let God build me, trust him because I said I made up my mind in the name of Jesus. And I said, Father, where I'm weak, you're more stronger. But I am made up my mind. I don't care. People say, oh, it's Thanksgiving, it's Christmas. That's your business. Eat. Tear it up. I'm going to eat too, but I'm going to eat what God tells me to eat. And I'm going to get down to, I don't know, whatever the Lord wants me to get down to. (laughs) What are you saying? You can be in perfect health, ladies and gentlemen, and fall dead. You can be in perfect slimness, whatever you want to call it, and fall dead. Just because you're not having an issue don't mean not to stop trusting God. You better trust God every day of your life, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days out of a year, plus leap year, whatever you want to call it. Because there's situations coming to your life, period. Life is life. This is why the United States, what we're in now, uh, are voting and, and uh, doing the best we can by picking the candidates and praying for the Lord. There's no president. There's nobody can deliver a country except Jesus Christ. Amen. You can't get your eyes on a certain person, certain people, and deli- even pastors and even excuse me, prophets and everything. Get your eyes so focused on if the prophet can come and touch me. I will be healed. Well, you're trusting the prophet instead of the living God because God says, I would never leave you and I would never forsake you. I'm with you in the hospital bed. I'm with you in the courtroom. I'm with you while you're going through your situations. I'm right there with you. Start getting God trained you to know where he's at. Hallelujah. Trust him. Trust him. And God takes care of the rest. But we have to do what our part is, the same way it would be voting. If God prophesies so-and-so is going to give you 10 years of prosperity, but you don't even have to get out and work, it ain't working. And then complain to God why you ain't getting prosper. God says in his word, a man shall not eat if he don't work. He earns his living by the sweat of his brow. Brow. I mean, you have to do something. You have to work. But trust God as you're working that God will give you the raise. God will promote you. God will do what he needs to do. 
to get you to the place that he wants you to get you to do. Trust him. Well, I've been trusted, but the, the thing is, like I was, you trust him so far, and then when you go back and, and have a relapse, what we call some people when they have drug problem or eating problem, they'll be clean for years, but then they turn around and go back to the situation and then find out the, where you went all the way back up here, you got to start all the way back over. You don't start back where you left from. you got to start all back over again. The same way with walking with the Lord. You can't sit there and praise him and trust him and, and, uh, and just honor him. And, and then when the heat comes in, you lose your trust, you lose your hope, and you just blah. And wondering, why is it taking so long? Because God cannot take you from here where you was at over there and then bring you back over here to put you over here. Because if he does one person that way, he's going to have to do the whole human race. I don't know about y'all, but every time in my walk, since my walk, I know this is a process. I never leap from first grade to twelfth grade. I never have. I had to go to first, second. Some of them want to hold me back in the third. Y'all didn't get that either, did you? It's a process. It's a daily walk. And as me and my wife has been talking over and over and over, it's, you cannot walk your faith with her, my faith with her faith and her faith with my faith. It's each, in a pers- each in individual has to walk their own faith out. Search out your own salvation. And if I wait on her to get where I need to go, she may not get go there for 20 years or vice versa. And I ain't planning on being no 20 years. I, I took an old saying that my co-worker said one time with me. I was working at Quincy Compressor one year, and uh, somebody told me, he said, man, you just grab a hold of my belt loop. I'm going to the top of this company. I said, well, I'm not going to hold on to your belt loop because you do some things I don't like to get your company, get your, go to the top. I said, I just hold on to the belt of truth, Jesus Christ. When God's ready for me, he'll promote me. When he wants me to go somewhere, he'll do it. But I'm going to work towards my goals, work towards to keep me above water, so to speak. That ain't my primary focus, but I'm trusting God in every area of my life. Man, I got so much big dreams that is put in my heart. You think that dream that God puts in your heart has only come from you? It comes from him. He gives you a dream and a desire to do or be something. It's not for you to just to sit there and wish and hope for it. It's for you and I to press through the uh, problems and the situation and press to the mark. Press to where I'm thinking that God's taking me. If it ain't the way he's going to take me, I'm trusting him he's going to switch me. You've got to start somewhere. That's the problem with people. They got, well, I don't know much of the Bible, and I can't preach. Well, bless God, if you wait till you get 100%, whatever you want to call it, to knowing every scripture and quote every scripture, you will never be the preacher. You'll never, because it takes a lot of teaching, a lot of training over and over and over and over. A lot of sacrifice. That's in, in every area of our lives. That's why we have to trust God. Um, we've been talking about trusting God to where you're going to go into that peace. Because you can't trust, you won't have peace. If I know I can't trust my coworkers, we won't have peace in, the, in there. Because I shut up, I shy away from them. And what's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm just watching my back because ain't nobody else here. God's watching me. But I'm just saying, you got to trust, trust in you. Well, God put it in my heart. You trust in something. No matter what you do, you trust in something. It might be trusting in the bottle. It might be trusting in pills. It might be trusting in food. You trust something. Because I did a demonstration of what, how easy it is to trust as the keys. You take the keys of your car. You, got, you see it, so you trust it. But you don't see everything that's inside the motor or the batteries or what, the wiring in the, in the car 
that that key is going to do what it's supposed to do, crank the car up or the truck or whatever you want to call it. So you trust it. So in reality, you trust what you see slash trust what you don't see. Because you don't see what's inside the motor. You didn't see when you turn off the key, the bearing twisted and locked up. You didn't see the battery cell last time you crunk it up to come to, this work, or come to church this morning. It fired its last charge to it. But yet you still believe it's going to go out there and crank. Same way as I told you about the Word of God. You see the Word of God. You hear the Word of God. You read the Word of God. So you don't see the Father in the natural, but you see the Father in the, His Word. So you take what you know that you got, you trust, then all of a sudden you start seeing and trusting God to show you himself in the natural, in the spirit. My God, God reveals himself to me every day, ladies and gentlemen. Every day he reveals himself to me. See, we're looking for supernatural all the time. We're looking for, well, I didn't see the, uh, the clouds turn to uh, rain money down and I need finances. And I... <laughs> As I said before, if God, the boss man says, hey, I got an hour overtime for you to work, praise God, I see God give me an hour. That ain't going to do it. I'm tired. No. That's the attitude that you got. But you take it, you keep moving for trusting God because if you trust God in what? In the little. If you're faithful in the little, he'll give you much. He'll let you see more things. Because you yourself is proven to God you are trustworthy what he says when he gives it to you to do what he says to do with it. A lot of us got talent that God can use for his glory. But we do not take that talent and trust God that God tells us what to do and use it and hoard it up for ourselves to where if it don't make me money, as the world sees it, sees it, I'm not going to use it. Well, God says, does says a man's worthy of his hire. That means God, God will pay you in due time. But you do what God says to do now. Then when he's, it's always preparing you for the next one. He's already getting ready to give you another blessing that you have not room enough to contain. See, we want the blessing we have not room enough contained, but don't, then all of a sudden we don't know what to do with it. Then it turns to bad for you. Because as I said one time before, if I gave you a million dollars today and you ain't broke some habits that God told you wants to get rid of, what that million dollars do? Buy more of your stuff to, break the, to have the habit? Sure will. Don't lie to yourself. It'll, 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 get, it'll, it'll make more room. If God hasn't trust, trained you, but you've been trusting God training you how to bring up your children, your grandchildren, with what you have, don't, uh, don't say you had to, I just spoil them. Yeah, we can spoil them. We can take care of them. But let me tell you something. When we have this attitude to spoil, guess what you're doing? You're hurting yourself and hurting that child. That went over good. You bring a child up. Yes, you reward them. I reward my grandbaby for hugging my neck the other day. I mean, that first time she grabbed a hold of my neck, I said, hug my neck. And she just grabbed a hold of my neck. I said, Mama, go ask her what kind of car she want. <laughs> That's spoiling, ain't it? Well, eventually get her a car, but well, guess what? If I had the money that way, what I do is I was okay, baby, let's get your car. When Dixie hired? No, you won't. Oh, yeah, that's my children. Because it doesn't hurt. Because let me tell you, when the money runs out, what are you going to do then? What's going to happen then? What are you going to trust then? The money's gone. So really, I like to, you trust the money. You trust the mama. You trust the daddy for everything. But God wants you to put your trust in him. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. I may go through all the way to 14 on that. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. 
in those days when you pray, I will listen. Look at that. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Trust me. I will be found by you. He didn't say by the pastor. He didn't say by the prophet. He didn't say by anybody, but by you. That's why you got to have your own personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, yourself. You can't depend on your husband to have the, uh, uh, the relationship with Jesus Christ or your wife to be dependent on it. You, each individual, every person that God creates from the womb has to have their own personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to have to have their own forgiveness. Mom and daddy can pray. Grandparents can pray for God, forgive them. But them themselves will not be saved from hell until them themselves confess. That they need a savior. So every person has to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I will end your captivity and restore your what? Fortune. I will end this stuff, the confusion. If you learn how to trust me now while you're in the battles, while you're in it, let me trust me to tame your tongue. Well, you're not moving fast enough. That's why I'm not, Tim, is because I want you to give me your tongue. Trust me. And I will teach you how to keep your mouth shut as my son kept his mouth shut in the middle of the whipping and the beats and the spit upon so that it wouldn't interfere what I, the blessing that I had for him. Oh, glory. The day I said I resurrect you and give you my right hand, my throne, you be able to be king of all. And the same way with us. As children, he said, I, you, get, you inherit it through my blood of my son Jesus, the same inheritance. I will give you my kingdom. There will be blessings. There, you can take and speak whatever you want. You can bind. You can set free. You see that? This is in your word. But we as Christians are just sitting here like, well, I just, no. it's left up to you. What do you want between you and God? Not what you and want your wife and the husband and your, the church congregation. That's why I said, if y'all feel like getting out, walking around, get out and walk around with the Lord. Raise your hands and nobody else is raising your hand. I'm going to raise my hand. Call me idiot, fool. I, God done got me. Ooh, he stirred me up. I'm going to praise my God because let me tell you, I know what's coming in my future. I know what God has planned for me. And I believe if I do what he says and trust in him and do that all that I can do, I believe I'm going to receive the plans that he has for me here on this earth and not when I just get to heaven. Hallelujah. But I had to start letting him train me. I had to let him get me to the place of what do you want? If you trust me, trust me. And as my children, my family can tell you, when my daughter was laying in that bed, a little tear running down her eyes, her face, and the doctor said the baby may not even have skin. We don't know. We're going to try to keep him in the womb as much as you can. What did I tell him? Both of them, I said, look, live or die, we trust in God, ain't we? Live or die, God is still, oh, get me. Live or die, God is still God, isn't he? Yeah. I said, keep your mouth where it needs to be. I told Brendan, keep your mouth where it needs to be. Love God. Through hell or high water, you got to make up your mind, I'm going to love my Jesus, and I'm going to praise him, and I'm going to honor him, and I'm going to give him thanks. And I'm going to let the world know how, and I don't care what, you lost your baby, you done this, oh, you did, this done happened to you, how can you still praise like that? All you want to try to do is bring me down where you at. I'm telling you, you better grab a hold of this belt, Luke, because I'm going to the top with Jesus Christ. 
because I done been down that road of every time you turn around, something else bring you down. Well, that was a good ride. Every time you turn around, it's finances. Every time you turn around, it's, it's help. It's every time you turn around, it's bless God, I'm going to do what this word says. I'm going to try it now, bless God. Because I'm tired of every time I turn around, so bless God, I'm trusting God. And every time a battle comes around, I trust the living God. Do I say I cry? Don't cry, no, I cry. Do I say, Lord, help me? Yes, I do. But I have learned to keep my mouth from the evil one to say what you, how you really feel and say, I know what my word that my God said to me. He said, I'll be the head and not the tail, the lender and not the bar. Bless going in, bless going out, and I'm going to be that way here on this earth. Whether you realize it or not, whether you want me to be it or not, I'm going to do it in Jesus' name. Ah, that's why God says, let the dead bury the dead. Let them stay in their slops. Let them stay in their pits if they want to stay. But you brush your feet, dust your feet off, and you move on what I tell you to move on. And when you see in my work, you'll see great and mighty things. And I made up my mind. It's left up for you to make up your mind. I will be found by you, Tim. Hallelujah. I make it personal. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and bring you home again to your own land. That means your whole family. That means everything. Because he's talking about where I'm bringing my people back to Jerusalem, back to Israel. I will gather them back again. Like I said, I, I them prophesied over them grandbabies, babies, spoke it into existence. Ah, that's a long time. I, I hope it is a long time, you know. I hope they'll be 20-something years old before they have one. But I'm just telling you how the Lord trains you. You speak it into now. Somebody's done planted it in the future. And then there it is. That's why you got generation curses. This is why you got other curses in your life. What other people speak has planted into the other generation, whether they're here or not. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to teach on that. You spoke it into existence, and that's why this child or this baby is battling with it now or being tormenting with it. Praise God. Jeremiah 33, verse 6. Nevertheless, the time will come when I will heal Jerusalem's wounds and give it prosperity and true peace. The time is, has, is at hand, ladies and gentlemen. The United States, right now, what we're going through, one candidate has said this is the election for the soul of the nation. When they said that, I knew when the Spirit of the Lord hit me, he said, son, that is exactly what they're saying. They want the soul of the nation of, of the United States because this is, the, this, is the, this is your decision, United States. This is God's put it in my head. This is your decision. And God already worked on me for next Sunday. That's why I only had about six scriptures. Said y'all weren't going to be here long. Now look at Barbara to finish this up. But God's already beginning to show me some things about next Sunday by his word about the United States with it. Because we cannot sleep in darkness no more. We got to wake up. And just because if, if and I'm, I don't, Lord, well, okay. Because I, I was fixing to tell you just because. And I feel him pull me back. So I'm going I'm to wait for that to next Sunday because he's, he's going to bring it out next Sunday. And all, matter of fact, remember we have a Sunday night next Sunday. Three days before the election. Because we're going to do what God said to do. And it's all left up to God and nothing else we could do. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. And we see our nation up in 
disorder. As in all the meeting of God's holy people, even our churches is in disorder. Marriages is in disorder. Beliefs in disorder. But God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. The only way you're going to get the true peace is to trust God's word. <laughs> Go to 34. I was going to talk, I was going to skip this because people take this out of context. Women should be silent during the church meeting. It is not proper for them to speak. They should be submissive, just as the law says. And I wanted to read that is because I'm going to bring it out here shortly about that's a, that people take that out of context. That's man-made when a woman needs to hush. If it wasn't for a woman, we wouldn't have life. Y'all didn't hear that. Y'all women should have shouted. That was your opportunity to shout. You ever seen a man bring forth another human being? My God. Y'all bring life. Y'all bring the population. Oh, they can't do it without a man. Oh, yes, they can because God did Jesus. So don't get bold, man. Don't walk around here. You can't do it without me. Oh, yeah, I can. I got Jesus. That's a little nugget for you. A woman is very, God looks highly up to a woman. Because a woman was a prophet. Deborah. <laughs> that upset some religious folks, but that's how people get all messed up, man. That, my God, if God, if a hard-headed man won't get up and do something, raise these women up, praise God to walk on water, raise the dead, hallelujah, cast out devils, and get these men on fire for you. Yeah. Boy, y'all ain't anybody here. Any women here? <laughs> Jesus. See, y'all been, y'all have done been told so much, y'all don't need no, y'all don't need the women. Y'all don't accept it, huh? Mm-hmm. Bless God, I would have jumped out of that chair. That's right. Preach it, preacher. You hear that, honey? Y'all didn't get that either. Good Jesus. <laughs> There's so much stuff that's going on, and God is going to reveal all this stuff. As we do the right thing, do our part, God's going to take the rest of it. And we're going to go into some great times and seasons that the world has never seen before. That doesn't, doesn't mean, though, to just sit back, not pray, not do nothing else and everything. Because who, no matter who wins this election, the devil's still alive. No matter who wins, the enemy is still here. Hello! The only way the enemy is going to run away and stay away is when Jesus Christ says, time no more. Amen. Then you're going to see him in physical. Then you're going to say, oh, I should have served you 50 years ago. That's right, but it's too late. <laughs> no, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Have y'all ever allowed the Holy Spirit to let you see him coming? Or how it would be like? Have y'all ever, oh, I got movies. Yeah, yeah, no, no, the movies skip out some stuff. Read scripture. Some of the movies skips out so a lot of stuff. But if you get over the scripture, you kind of kind of let the Holy Spirit tell you how. Wow, man. Think about that. This could be the day that the Lord comes. Do I mean, I mean, have you allowed the Holy Spirit just to bring you to a place of all the worry and the confusion that's going on a lot. Think about him coming to this very second. What would you do? Hold up your bills and praise God. Pray, help me, Lord, to pay for this bill. Or would you? Whoo! Ain't got a worry. 
I'm just, I'm just, the Holy Spirit lets you give you an example of what he would do. Don't you know his holy anointing is here in this room? And if you're a child of his, don't you know his holy anointing is everywhere you go? Everywhere. He's with you. If you're a child of his. Isaiah 54, verse 13. Sometimes you need to just, you hear the peace? Be quiet. Turn off that TV. Turn off the negative news. Turn off this stuff. Do what you need to do to get your life with the Lord. And ain't no friend better than Jesus. Thank God for good friends. But when it comes down to it, ain't no friend better than Jesus. Ain't no husband better than Jesus. Ain't no wife better than Jesus. Ain't no daughter better than Jesus. And ain't no son better than Jesus. Ain't no grandbaby better than Jesus. Y'all get the picture one day. I'm in love with Jesus. And when I'm in love with Jesus, I can enjoy my family. They can enjoy me. They look how crazy they are. I was doing acrobats on the, on the couch today. I about felt my daughter record me. It ain't happen. I was just doing that. Woo! Glory, hallelujah. He nuts. Yes, I am. I'm, a, I'm happy. I'm thankful. Even though I got a bank account that needs some money in it, I'm thankful. Hallelujah. I'm not looking at the bank account, praise God. You know what I'm looking at it? I'm looking at it, what the Lord number he put in my heart to believe for. I'm looking at that number. And I got that number in here, baby. I'm doing some dancing. Mm, 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 mm. I wrote checks out and told them not to count it. Cash it. Now, you don't cash this check. Yeah. Please don't cash it. I call the bank. Number, don't let them cash it. What do you mean? I believe my God. This vision that he's put in my heart is, stays with me. I can't get rid of it. No matter how hard it's hard to pay the bill, no matter how many times they call, I can't get rid of it. So I know it's from God. The devil don't want me to have it because he know what I do with it. So I'm going to keep believing it and trusting God when it brings into existence in the natural. I'm already trained to do what I need to do with it. I ain't going to say what I need to do with this, Jesus. Give it all away. Are you crazy? I just got it. <laughs> Boy, I upset some people too. He called Jesus crazy. No, I didn't. Me and my father, me and my father got a relationship so much, so strong here lately. He, I, I love that man. I love him. I really do. I, 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 I just love him. I can't trust nobody else but him. That's it. I, I, I trust him for everything in my life, everything, from the grass that grows in the yard to the ants that crawls on the ground. God, I trust you to show me how to get rid of them fire ants. I tr whatever it may be, I trust you. Down to the very fiber. I, when I had the kids, when they were small, we all prayed. I trust us as the very fiber that made out of the carpet in this house. I trust you for every little thing there is. What the chemical that's inside the paint. People say, man, you must. No. That's him training me to put my mind upon him and upon all things. I'm in everything, boy. Don't get immune to just immune to the surroundings. I'm in everything. I'm in it. I'm here. I'm with you. I'm standing with you. I'm walking with you. I'm in there when you're going through the test. I'm in there when they're doing the surgeries. I'm in there. I'm with you. Why? Because Isaiah 54 says, I will teach you. I will teach all your children. And they will enjoy the great peace. I will teach you as you teach your children, and they will enjoy the great peace. 
They would, they would start learning how to trust God in the middle of a storm and keeping their mouths away from everything and keeping the keep on keeping on trusting. Raise your hand while the tears fall. Raise your hand and praise the living God while the devil is sitting there. He found you. She dead. No, my God is my God. That's a made up mind. You a fool to not praise him and worship him. Why? Because the very rocks will. That's why Abraham had to, God does not want you to sacrifice your children as people do today. But that was a picture language for Abraham to take your child up there. Give your child to me as a sacrifice. It was a picture language for me and you. How much God wants you and him to be the only one. Nothing coming between us. Nothing. And it was a picture how God himself was going to send Jesus, his only begotten son. I got to lay down my royalty for your selfishness. I got to lay down my obedience for your disobedience. I got to lay my kingship down for your filthy rags. I'm king. The only reason Pilate was able to lay his hand up on me is because my father told me to let him do it. Because if not, I could have called, called a host of angels and took everybody out. See, that's people that can't let, let God show you a picture language of who, how much God is loving, how much God is for you and not against you, and how much he wants to be loved back. See, God has always got me on this journey of everything is about us. Everything is saying, God, I need this. God, I need that. God, I need, I want this. And this is perfectly fine because the Bible tells us, come in your prayers and tell God what you need. And see, I got scripture with that. What is he telling you what you need? He already knows what you have need of before you ask it. Got another scripture for that. He's letting me and you just learn how to be a relationship with him. As it would be just a regular human being of you talking with today. And he wants us to be in, 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 in the midst instead of us all the time. God, I need, I need, I need, I need. What happened by trusting God says, Father God, you the king of kings. What shall I do for you, master? Master, what can I do? Let me master wash your feet instead of wash my feet. I need my feet washed. I need my heart healed. I need what I want. Have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And say, Father God, Lord, I don't want to break your heart. I don't want to break your heart. I want, Father, help me not to break your heart. Help me to be a better steward of you, Lord. See, that's good because I want to do it for you. See, that's what he wants. He wants you to be a steward of him. He wants you to Quit breaking his heart. He wants you to quit dropping your trust for him. So get the picture? Well, I just get, well, everybody's been guilty of it. But I have made up my mind that I'm tired of hurting my Jesus. I'm tired of, because why? He said, greater is he is in you than he is in the world, boy. You do not have to keep falling for the devil's traps if I'm in you. Make your mind up, boy. You got two choices. You with me or you against me? As one person said one time before, I just keep uh, uh, hearing this negativity, negativity, this, that, whether that, just hard. I can't wait. Well, make up your mind which one you're going to listen to. That's the simple thing. You know how to get rid of that negativity? Which one you're going to keep on listening to? You're going to listen to the positive or you're going to listen to the negative? Make up your mind up. I don't, uh, <laughs> that's where I was I was in the natural that way and I was in the spirit that way I was in the natural over here whoo, 
Oh, yes, Lord. And I was over here in the natural because things ain't going right. And then I was in the spirit. Oh, I believe. And then, and then I was over here. I believe that I don't believe. Un- called unbelief. So I started, I said, I'm going to believe what he says, period. If I don't understand it, he'll show me the understanding, but I'm not going to put my mouth on it to where I know I don't went too far. I know he's real. You can't tell me he ain't real. Get that out of your head. It's done. Over. He is a living, breathing being. It's done. It's over. Do I understand everything he does right now? I have no clue on some of it. But I got a promise in his word says, if you lack wisdom, ask for it, and I'll give it to you freely. That means I got to seek him for it. That means I got to trust him for it. I got to keep on going for it. <sighs> Isaiah 55, verse 12. And they go through 13 through 17. Let's look at it. You will live in joy and peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song, and the trees of the field will clap their hands. What's going on around here? Where once there were thorns and cypress trees, where once were there were thorns, now cypress trees would grow. Where where needles grew, uh, you don't mess me up. Uh, myrtles will sprout out. These events will bring great honor. Listen, these events will bring great honor to you. Oh, but we won't. You know, when I ride around in the Cadillac, you know what I'm saying? People look at, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. Bringing honor. Who's it bringing honor to? Bringing, supposed to bring it back to God. God, do you know your p- poverty can bring God honor because of the way you act in the midst of it? And you can learn and teach people how to be blessed and proud of them and pray and give God thanks for a can of pork and beans until you and everybody else eating filet mignons. Glory to God, I know I couldn't because God done trained me that pork and beans. I couldn't even have that can of pork and beans. God to be the glory for these pork and beans. It's a, it's, it's a mental state that God has to put you in. Because I'm not looking at everybody else around me. I don't know where you get your fillets from. You could have went out there at night and killed the, the, the rancher's cow called Stilling. Boy, I got quiet. I hope no thieves up in here. These events will bring great honor to the Lord's name. They will be an everlasting sign of his power and his love for you, for me. This is why I can enjoy true peace while I cry. I can draw enjoy true peace when you hear something wrong. Because I'm trusting the Lord. Oh, I heard somebody say, well, well, it's just so hard. And I just don't know what else. It's always something. Well, have you ever gave everything to God instead of half? Have you made up your mind, bless God, whether I lose it or got it? I'm going to stay with Jesus. Cow God, take it away. Ain't that what it was, the commercial? I'm standing for Jesus. And then really surrender to God, surrender to his wants, and see what happened. I'm a living breathing, proven fact that God is alive and well. But you got to make up your mind while you're in the fiery furnace to trust the living God. Period. Done. 
I, I, I can't ask you why. Why? How are you ever going to know if you don't ask why? That's religion. Don't question the Lord. Well, how you? Can anybody tell me why this chair is moving? Or oh, why that was a bad example? Or oh, whatever. Why? Don't question the Lord. Hush. I mean, it's strange to me too, but I don't know what's going on. That's a devil moving that thing. You better do something about it. <laughs> God, what's going on here? He said, that's a devil moving that thing. Say, if I didn't question him, he would have said, you letting it play in your house. Picture language. What's going on here, Lord? Well, this, 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 that. Okay, what we're going to do about it? Turn to Acts 2 or 4. Do this, do that. Okay. All right, I've done all that. Oh, what, else, what else I got to do, Lord? Do this, do that. Well, I, hold on. Oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Now, I've been doing, 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 doing. I ain't seeing nothing, 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 nothing. Uh oh, here we're going to the negative. I'm trusting. I'm going to keep on doing. Get the picture? Keep on doing. And all of a sudden, whew, things will start happening. Glory to God, where things supposed to be dead, they're still alive. Where you're supposed to be broke, you got more than enough. Where you're supposed to be sick and dying, you're alive and well. So simple. Praise God. Once you let God train you. These events, these events will bring great honor to the Lord's name. They will be an everlasting sign of his power and love. Hallelujah. For me and you. For the world. Let's look at Romans 16 verse 20 and we're going to let you stand. The God of peace will soon. Oh, look at that. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. Understand, when we do all that we can do, understand the God of peace will soon take this situation over and you'll be out of it. The God of peace will take and put Satan under your feet. Where the doctor said you would die, you shall live. When you said, when the doctor said it would be a chronic disease, you'll never get rid of it and never kiss no cure, goodbye coronavirus. Because God of peace will soon crush Satan, putting, up under his, putting it up under your feet. United States, if you do the right thing and my people cry out to my name, you will see me move on the behalf of my righteousness and my righteous people. And you will see my hand upon your country once more time, saith the Lord. You will see my hand move in, you, in my churches. You will see my hand move in your cities. You will see my hand move in your loved one's life. You will see me do what I said I was going to do in these last days, saith the Lord. Amen. Somebody ought to give him a hand clap. And the des oh yes, I'm, yes, Lord, I'm obeying. And the desires that I have put in your heart will come to the forefront. You shall see what you hope for and what you believe for. You shall feel it. You shall taste it. You shall see it. And physically, praise God, I'm telling you, I feel the Spirit of God this morning. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. And before I read Numbers 6, y'all could pull that up for me, just Numbers 6, verse 24 through 26. Before I read that, play us, play us a song. I want y'all to trust God, folks. Learn how to trust God. Stay with the Lord no matter what. Stay with the Lord. 
Let people rampage. Let people talk. Let people say things. Let them do what they got to do. As long as they ain't putting your hands on you, let them do what they got to do. As long as it ain't interfering with your, what, the area that God got you over, that means your household, your home, let them do what they have to do. But as for me and my house, we're trusting the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. And then if Satan tries to do something, we're going to have let God already t- teaching us how to loosen his angels to do battle. Because you don't want to mess. The Bible even says it's better for you to tile a millstone around your neck and cast yourself in the deepest of the sea than for you to mess with my little ones. This manifestation that's coming to the United States, not only to the United States, but across the world, is going to be a time that God himself ordained as we trust him, as we seek him, as we honor him. And it's not going to be a place just where you can get blessed and go you live your own ways. He's going to change you. From the inside out. And you wouldn't want be you wouldn't want to go back. Because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is fixing to magnificently do things and show and answer by fire. The glory of God is going to be upon the churches in the last days that the world have never seen before. Yes, Lord. Okay. God says that song is what he picked. Where we're saying, take me to the holy of holies. He said, all right, you trusted me, and I'm fixing to take you into the holy of holies. Get ready. It's not going to only be for you, saith God. It's going to even be for me because I'm going to physically touch you. I'm going to physically put my arms around you. Because I've been desiring this for many, 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 many years, saith God. But you have to get to the place where I tell you to go and to be at for me to allow you to enter into the Holy of Holies. A people that has made their mind up, a people that has trusted in me. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. That's why God says he's going to take you out from the religion of man-made religion. He's going to take you out away, away. People think how the word's supposed to be. He is going to reveal the true God. He's going to reveal the true word. He's going to, it's going to be no question of who he is. It's not going to be, is that me? Is that God or the devil? It's going to be the living God himself. There will be no confusion. There will be no denial that the Lord Jesus Christ will be setting foot upon this earth with his spirit like the world have never seen before. It's going to be a place where he's going to touch and heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, heal the blind. I, saith God, will get the glory and my son's name will be lifted up on high, saith the Lord. Trust me, trust me, what I say I will do in my time, saith God. Put the holy ground on, and I'm going to let the altar be open. Because you're going to experience some things this morning. Because the Spirit of the Lord is here. Cut me up. Church, I'm telling you, coming to church and leaving the same way is over. Either you are going to get unrestless and leave, or you're going to be crying out and running to this altar. Because no pain 
No sickness, no death can stand in the presence of the living God. And no demons will stand in the presence of the living God. Ha. Huh. Standing, yes, Lord, on holy ground. Yes, God, there are angels all around. Holy Ghost, have your way. Let us pray. Jesus now. For we are standing in his presence on holy ground. Because the Spirit of God, wherever the Spirit of the Lord, there is holy ground. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Father. Get ready. Holy Ghost. We have trust in you for this time. We have been praying. We have been asking. And we have been believing. That Father God, what you say in your word, you would do. And we know that you're the true answer. Yes. Let the presence of the Lord overflow this place. Holy God. Yes, Lord. Oh, come on, church. Give him praise this morning. He is preparing you to receive the King of kings and the Lord of lords. If you got anything that is interfering for your receiving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, let the Holy Ghost get rid of it. It's His time, not yours. Jesus. Holy Ghost. Come on, reach to him this morning. Let this be a change now. This ain't just a regular service this morning. Morning, Believe it. Believe this. This is the beginning that he's what he promised, that he's fixing to do things that the world have never seen before. Hey, hey. Because God is bringing his people back. Whosoever have ears to hear. God is bringing his people back. Gathering them from every nation. Every tongue. Every tribe. Let it play. Holy Father. You're going to break every curses. All the curses. You're going to break all the poverty, the lack of wisdom, all the diseases. Father God, this is your hour. This is your day. This is your time. Father, you said in your word, Lord, to pray. Anoint them with all, Lord, and you will raise them up. So, Father, let your spirit do what it, your word says. Father God, no man will get the praise. No man will get the glory, but Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone will get the honor and the praise, oh God. Yes, Lord. Let this be the hour. Let this be the time. Saith the Lord. Ha, ha, sha, ho, ko, handa, ha, he, ha, ho, hai, ha, ka, wa, na, ha, di, ha, pa, sha, na, la, po, ku, ba, 
ha hello bahande hello bashanda ha e a maketa ha ba he so be it saith god the blood of the lord is running through your veins the blood of the lord is going from the top of your head to the soles of your feet in every area of the brain all the way down through the arms and through the chest area and through the stomach and through all the legs and to the feet the blood of god is destroying every disease the blood of god is destroying every gene that protect it from mamas and daddies and every curse saith the Lord I am the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob I am the God that healeth thee saith the Lord saith the Lord so be it my son go in health yes Lord every demon that tries to come back to your mind, set, saith the Lord. Speak, it is done, saith God. Speak my name in Jesus' name, and they will flee. They will never come back. For you hold the hand of the Lord. And the Spirit of God says, You are holding the king of kings of the Lord of lords. Papa. Glory to God Almighty. Huh? Yeah? Hi? Go ahead. Hada Hada. Hop by. Son of the book of it. Family, praise me. For a miracle is in your house. Hata Poko by. Yeah, Mama. You've been praying a long time, but let me tell you, saith God. Your prayers is like aroma to my nose, saith the Lord. And I tell you this day and this hour, saith the Lord, I have bought of these prayers up and now I am opening them up and pouring out the blessings that these you've been praying for years, saith the Lord. I am going to open it up and you're going to see it in days and weeks and months and even years. Get ready, my daughter, saith the Lord. Rejoice, be happy. Go in peace, saith the Lord. Yes. Yeah, I say unto you to my daughter. Yeah, you said that you're stepping out. Now I tell you this day and this hour. Yes, yeah, step out with me, saith the Lord. And I tell you this day and this hour, saith the Lord, that you too shall see my anointing into your lives. You too shall see my answer of your prayers. You too have been bottling up. I've been bottling up the prayers. And it was a sweet aroma to me. But I tell you this day and this hour from my servant's mouth. I tell you that you too shall see the glory of my hand in your family. You shall see me move in behalf that even you can't even hardly believe, saith the Lord. But it would be me, saith God, doing his great work. It would be me, saith God, that would take and do things and open the doors that needed that you thought was closed. And I will open these doors and you will go free, my daughter, saith the Lord. Hey. Holy God, a whole family. Oh my God. There's a glow around this family. And this family has been faithful. This family has been praying. This family has been standing in gaps, saith Lord. And I tell you this day and this hour, saith the living God, that I am in the midst of thee. I am going to reveal myself to you. I rebuke every curse, every foul word that came from man. And I, by my son's blood, will intervene on your behalf, saith God. I will make a way where the same is no way. I am the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, saith God. You shall see my hand. You shall see my anointing. You shall see my glory, saith the Lord. You shall see it, saith God. No more torment with this family no more. No more, saith God. No more, saith God. Trust me, saith the Lord. Trust me, saith the Lord. Trust me, saith the Lord. Hamba, shandala ba, ketala ba, handala ba, kikala ba, randa, ketala ba, randa. Hey, 
Keep the Lord Shanda the boy. Shanda in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For you are standing in the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. 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 Keep on keeping on believing. Keep on trusting. Keep on, church. Ah. And God Oh, I'm telling you, the Lord Jesus Christ says He knows your faith. And your faith has made you whole, saith the Lord. No more. Haka. Haraba. Hera. Hedoboko. Randa. Handa ba shandala ba kupa. Era ba shandala ba ran. Heda ma hala ba hale de boko ba ba. Kita la ba handa ya. Heda la ba randa la ba shandala ba kupa. Heda ma. Yes, Lord. This is the arms of the Lord. Kupa handa ba handa ha. God says he's seen every tear. He know every confusion. And God says from this day forth, you will feel me hold you in my hand, saith the Lord. A physical touch, not only spiritual, but physical, saith God. I am with you. Fear not, my brother. For the Lord said he is with you. From now on, you're going to see him physically. Oh, God. Get ready. Come by. Shanda ba. Handa ba. Hey, Thank you, Lord. There you go. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. Yeah. Tell him. Tell him. Come by. Handa ba. Shanda ba. Yes, God. He knows you. That's why he has got you. Long life is ahead of you. Long healing life. Is ahead of you, saith the Lord. Oh. He's not through with you yet. Keep up, head up, keep praying, keep believing. In the name of Jesus, Father, we believe it. Woo. Glory, I'm going to prophesy. Can I prophesy? You know what prophecy is? Speaking in faith what you believe. I'm going to prophesy within seven months he's going to be running in his church. I'm going to prophesy. I'm going to believe. He's going to be doing this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you about a man that healeth me. Let me tell you about a man. If he do it for me, he'll do it for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe it, you shall receive it, saith God. You got my number six ready? Number six, verse 24 through 26, right before we bring our tithes and offerings. Josh. All around. Do you know you can have this at home? Do you know you can feel the experience of the living God at your home? Let me tell you something. When you start experience, experience this at your home, when you get here, this is be just a place that you're going to just, hallelujah, have a good time. you got to learn how to experience at home. And it ain't because of God. It's because of me and you. We're too busy. We're too caught up. Hey! I done made up my mind. I'm going to experience the peace of the Lord because I'm going to trust the living God. Because this word says in Numbers 6, 24 through 26, when the Lord brought this to my attention early this morning, I was up at 2 o'clock this morning. Well, really at 1 o'clock. I didn't go to bed till 3 o'clock this morning. God was showing me some things about next Sunday and plus brought me my attention to this scripture. He said, I want you to read it over my people because I'm a God that, that does what he says. And it's my promises to you. He says, may the Lord bless you and protect you. 
May the Lord smile on you. Meaning let the God not only smile in his blessings upon you, let him smile because he's pleased with you. Let him smile. Well, I just can't please him. Yes, you can. Just love on him. There's no, have you been a perfect child when you was a parent? People that got parents, had children, they had a perfect child. You still love them. But when they do good, reward them for the goodness instead of rewarding them just to keep their mouth shut. We would order them, hey, just get out of my face. Here, take the candy, get out of my face. We don't do that. That's wrong. You teach them the right way, and then you take and reward them when they do good. And that's the same way your father is. When I see my children, my church, please me. He said, that makes me want to bless them. That makes me want to move for them. Even more. I already want to move for him because I'm a God of mercy, love, and grace. But when I see you trust me, when I see you love upon me, when I see you hug me, oh, man, that pleases the Lord's heart. That makes him smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. 25. Are they all on it? Okay. Cause I'm, <laughs> okay. But take this for the rest of the week. May the Lord bless you and protect you. Believe God's blessing you in the middle of the storm. While you're in the middle of the hurricanes, while you're in the middle of the fiery furnace, God's going to bless me. Amen. God's blessing me because he said he will. And he's going to protect me. That means I might have to pack up and leave. Praise God. Let the hurricane have its way. Because God is, let me tell y'all something. This ain't no coincidence these hurricanes is coming up like this. You could call it global warning all you want to. I believe there's some things that people better wake up and smell the coffee, so to speak. And the God, you, God as he delivering his people out of Egypt, he allowed things to happen. But he protected his people, those who listened to him. But though you got to get up under the blood, you got to get up under where he tells you, put the blood up on the doorpost, get up under there. Don't come out until I tell you. Don't just peep. Ooh, let me see. Stay in there because I'm, I'm not putting up with this evil. And I'm not putting up with this backstabbing, lying, cheating, stabbing, killing, fussing, fighting, aggravating. But it ain't keeping on with my kingdom. I would not allow it with Lucifer. Who do you think I'm going to keep allowing it in the midst of my people? It ain't happening, saith God. And that's why I'm going to get up under the blue. Yes, sir, master. <laughs> Woo! And I might holler at you, hey, Tommy, come on over here, boy. Get you some of this stuff. Get out of that mess. Come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, Father, we thank you so much that you are bringing us into a place, Father God, that you are going to be justice. And you're going to do judge. You're going to be justice and fair, though. But, Father God, you, we got to listen to you. We got to listen to you. Father God, and we just thank you and, and honor you for who you are. And what Jesus already done, we honor that, Father. And so, Father, as your word just said, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you protected. Take the promises of the Lord and go forth, my people, and lift up your heads and know that I am with you, saith the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, be blessed. Bring your tithes and offerings to the Lord. Whew. Hey, Barbara.